Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. We're your hosts, Calvin Timms and Dale Terry. You can find us over on X at TDC underscore Calvin and at Dynasty underscore Dale. You can find the podcast on Twitter, X at FF After Dark. And we are excited. We're going to be going through our final mock draft of the season because games start this thursday hopefully everybody yeah buddy it's been a long time man it's been a long off season this one hasn't been that bad i don't feel there's been enough news to kind of trickle through um and kind of prolong it a little bit there but Games start here in just a couple days, you know, two days after you guys are listening to this, most likely. But Thursday night, we got a banger. We're going to be putting out a preview for that one. So make sure you come back on Thursday. Uh, Thursday morning, we'll be putting out that that preview for that game, which will be good and going to be exciting. I think it's going to be a low-key banger based on, you know, the way the two teams are kind of projected for this offseason. But... Before we get there, we're going to go through this mock draft. And before we get to the mock draft, if you can follow us on YouTube at Dynasty After Dark YouTube channel, like, comment, subscribe on the channel over there. We're also available on Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere that podcasts are found. If you don't want to watch our ugly faces, you want to just listen to our melodious voices you know the soothing voices that we have you know one time i've been doing this for a couple years one one time uh this is just funny and and i won't get us off on too big of a rabbit trail here but one of the comments on one of my early videos was they said you have a real porn voice for podcasting oh, <laughs> oh don't be saying that Calvin, because we're gonna get demonetized now. yeah assuming we're ever monetized you know but, that's true valid point but still but they told me i had a <laughs> porn voice for uh for like oh. a, a a caller voice you know those right. whatever numbers you know i was just right. like i don't know how to take so, that is that a good thing so be smooth, so be smooth. <laughs> a bad thing but i just yeah. found that hilarious i was the the oh, porno no. of, of dynasty <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah i've been doing this for a couple years so if you like listening to our voices you can find us again on spotify apple anywhere that podcasts are really found so that said we're going to be jumping into a one quarterback mock draft here we're gonna have two running backs three wide receivers so a little bit deeper on the wide receivers full ppr uh just to you know really make it emphasize these these wide receivers one tight end one flex and four bench so it's going to be a little bit tighter um i think it's going to be a little bit more competitive here i'm gonna be drafting from the four spot dale's on the back half we're not going to be competing for the same players in this one and he's going to be picking at 11 i'm interested to see (laughs) unfortunately i don't think that cooper cup is going to be caught up with sleepers adp just yet probably Um, not He's no. still ranked at 15 overall, and I don't think he's going to be a no, round two you. pick um, in no. most people's drafts. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how far him and JT fall in um, in your in mm-hmm. your drafts if you haven't finished your draft yet. If you have, please comment down below and let us know where Cooper Cup fell in your draft if you dra- drafted yep. this last weekend. But that said, we're going to kick it off here, and I'm going to start this draft, and let's see how it goes. Whoa! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. What? So the f- the, oh, what? the computer <laughs> went crazy. The computer took Travis Kelsey 101. Uh, Team one going for it. You love to wow. see it. You love it. Wow. Um, interesting because Justin Jefferson was the number two pick and Jamar Chase was number three. And if you're watching on YouTube, um, you can't follow along with the draft board. I'm going to have it here. I'm on the clock here at four. I did not expect this to kind of be the scenario where Christian McCaffrey was available for me at four. Usually he's yeah. like top two. So I'm going to go ahead and take Christian McCaffrey and not take too much time here on uh, on that pick. Now, right after that, Austin Eckler, I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. Tyreek Hill at six, Stephon Diggs at seven. Interesting. You have a nice choice here. A couple of running backs, a little run of running backs here. Bijan Robinson, yeah, Nick was. Chubb, and Saquon Barkley are the next three picks after Diggs. You're on the clock. Let's go ahead and, and hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm I'm actually honestly surprised to see Chubb and Barkley, you know, in the first round. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's be well Chubb Chubb is Chubb's not really, I, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm more surprised to see Chubb at 109. Like he's probably more of a like a like 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 the two. I was hoping to get him at 202. Yeah, personally, but um, he's been rising you know, for sure, for yes, sure. He, he definitely has because there's no one to compete in that in that offense. But I think it um, sets you up for a pretty nice pick here. You have your choice of CD Lamb or AJ Brown. Right, um, right. 
You could always take Cooper and Cup. <laughs> I it's very tempting to take Cooper Cup now, but um, yeah. So I I mean I think I'm going to go with C.D. Lamb. I feel I I feel he's the best choice out of the out of the guys available. Yeah, he should I be a target monster. Have, yeah, yeah, and I, I I really expect him to have a huge year. I do really like A.J. Brown, but I think the offense as a whole is going to take a, like maybe like a quarter step back compared to last year. So, you know, I, I, I don't think he's going to, yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see him being like a low end wide receiver one compared to CD lamb, which I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be the, the guy. All right. Patrick Mahomes and AJ Brown right after that. So you're back on the clock here. AJ Brown gone. Mahomes gone. Mahomes is he's he's an interesting one. He's interesting, been yes. a second round pick. It sets you up again for uh, the uh, yes. awesome Cooper Cup. Devontae Adams is there. Amon Ross St. Brown. Garrett Wilson. Are you just going to lock in your boy Garrett Wilson and, and, and go Actually, for the hero I, RB? I, I I really am, and I'm 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 really okay with that because you yeah. know like there's still a, a lot of good running backs. That there's only been five off the board, mm -hmm. and I would I would much rather get my wide receivers set with, uh, with this being a three wide receiver league. I feel more comfortable with that. Sure. So, um, you know, I I think it, it's it's for me. It would be between Amon Ra and Garrett Wilson. I I really think both of these guys are going to go off. Um, I'm not big on Devontae Adams because I don't like Jimmy G and hmm. I think that that offense as a whole is going to be garbage. Yeah. And with, when, and with Cooper cup, he is forever injured and forever in Minneapolis. So, yep. yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson because of Aaron Rodgers. I think, okay. I think he has, I, I, I feel he has the, he, I think he has the higher ceiling than Amon Ra. Like I already have a, a pretty good floor with uh lamb and i'm kind of going you know i don't want to say hero ball here with with wilson but yeah i i really think he has the ha, ha, has a very good chance to be like the wide receiver one this year in sure all honesty go ahead so lock it in garrett, garrett wilson all right so right after that josh jacobs Devonte adams cooper cup there he goes at two five Derrick Henry, again, if you are in a draft this last weekend, tell me where Cooper Cup was actually kind of falling. Because I'm, I'm just interested to see him and Jonathan Taylor. I think that those two are very polarizing, you know. Yes, um, they are. Derrick Henry at 2-6. He was interesting. Uh, I have a couple interesting names here for me, though. Now, ah oh, man, Jalen Waddle and, and Amon Ross St. Brown go right before my pick. I was hoping one mm, of those two guys yeah. would make it to me, to be honest yeah. with you, because my problem here is I don't love the wide receivers on the board. And I know, you know, some people Chris disagree Olave. with me. Chris Olave, Olave there, man, I don't on. love him as my yeah. wide receiver one. I don't like T. I Higgins agree. as my I one um, and Devonta Agreed. Smith. You know, it's the. <laughs> I always find it funny though that argument of not liking these guys as my one. Well, if I pass on them here, they're still not going to be my one, <laughs> and I'm going with Definitely someone not. else. But yeah. when you look at the board here and the way that the board kind of fell. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts are still available. Mark Andrews, who I've been very, very high on all yeah. offseason. You know, he's always oh, kind of missed practice for a couple days. Who cares? Whatever. You know, we go back to the seasonal thing. They could have allergies out the wazoo right now based on their practice field. But Tony Pollard there at running back, I'm going to take him actually and just see like how my build kind of develops here because I did not expect to get Christian McCaffrey, but Tony Pollard in round two, I do like that a lot. We'll see how the board kind of goes around the turn here. So after me, Josh Allen, Chris Olave, Najee Harris to finish out the second, T. Higgins, Jalen Hurts, and Devonta Smith. So I really didn't lose out on much. Now, mm -mm. for me, it's between two players here, and it's going to be Mark mm -mm. Andrews, the tight mm -mm. end. It's a onesie position, or DK Metcalf. Ugh. And right. I think that I'm going to try and punt on – I think I'm going to punt on tight end a little bit more here um, because Ooh, I, I do think that there's some good players that are coming up that you can get a little bit later. Right. Um, yeah, you know. and 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 I, I I do hear that, but I really love Andrews at, at, at the three four spot. Like that's where I would take him all day every day. If True. It was me. You know, I, I mean, I, I would just go ahead and take that, but I do understand with you not having a wide receiver now, that's a little scary. Uh, right. 
Actually, I, I think you've convinced me. I'm going to take Mark Andrews here. Oh, oh there we go. And uh, like the it. reason like why, it. so the reason why, because I have two pass-catching running backs, McCaffrey and Pollard, I think I have a little bit safer of a floor there um, at the running back position. So let me get a, a stud at the at the tight end, and I'm just going to yep. patchwork some of these wide receivers a little bit later on here. Now, after Mark Andrews, Ramondre, Jameer Gibbs, Calvin Ridley, DK Metcalf, Travis Etienne, and Keenan Allen, you're up on the clock. What are you leaning with this pick? Um, I was really hoping that Jameer Gibbs would fall to me, but I, <laughs> I know he's been rising a lot lately, like insane in an insane mm-hmm. amount because because they've been saying he's going to be a wide receiver. Yeah, you know he, he's he's they always say it, right there. offensive weapon. They, they, but... they always say that. So you know, so who's then, left and, that you're looking at here then? Yes, yes. Um, I I probably should look running back. That would probably be good. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's for the tight ends, you know, nobody really is. Yeah. Really, Kittle, uh, you've got Kittle or, 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 or Hawkinson. Hawkinson. It's, it's, I mean, I do really like Darren Waller, but I feel it's too early to take Waller. Sure. And you I thinking mean, I'm, at I'm all about like, the third wide receiver, Debo Samuel, Amari Cooper, DJ I Moore, and these about guys? That, but I, I feel I should probably get a running back now. Okay. Um, I'm not, re- I'm not really loving Aaron Jones. I mean, and no I Lamar here. Year. Or Joe Burrow. I, I, I thought about Lamar, but I think I at three eight or three eleven. I mean, it's decent value, but yeah, it, it is a very good value. But I, I think I'm gonna. I think at four two, I'm gonna take somebody that fair I enough. Really love this yeah, year. There's, and I, I, yeah, there's yeah. you've got Burrow. Yeah. You've got Lamar. You've got a couple guys that could fall there to the fourth round. So yes. who are you taking so, here, at running so, back then? So I, I think I'm going to go with. I don't like the guy morally or ethically, whatever, but I think he's going to have a fantastic year this year mm-hmm. and, and he's, and he's just going to hit it out of the park. Cause there's really nobody behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be Joe Mixon. Right. I think he's just going to. He's yeah. He's, go he's set up year. for sure. Um, is, took the pay is. cut, everything like that. Aaron yes. Jones, George Kittle right there at three, 12 and four, one. You're back on the clock. So is this where you're going to look at Lamar here or um, Brees Hall? I'm, I, I'm either looking at Lamar or Justin is is who I'm looking at. Ooh, Justin Fields. Um, you do love yes. your Justin. I do love Justin Fields. I love. Is he going to be better lot. than Lamar? That's the question. I know. I know. <laughs> but I I feel I feel that if I know that 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 is the thing, and I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger and just and and just and just ride on the hype of Justin Fields. Um, I really do love Lamar, and I think he's going to have a fantastic year. But I think hey, the man. running numbers are, are, are going to go down a little bit uh, on on him, and I think I think they're going to play Justin Fields to death. And I am here for it. So I, I went I went with Fields. All right. So right after that, oh, oh. Joe Burrow, oh, Brees oh, Hall, Kenneth good. Walker. Debo Samuel, Amari Cooper, and one pick before me, you yep. son of a gun. Team five, Team five my guy. <sighs> Lamar Jackson. They're, dude, they're, they, Amon Ra, Lamar Jackson. Team five is my nemesis right here. Um, right. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my guy. So going through here and looking at the, the skill players, I was hoping Debo or Amari Cooper would make it to me as my wide receiver one. Hopkins yep. is here, DJ Moore, Drake yep. London. Um, I really want Drake London, and I'm actually going to play the ADP game because if you look after me there's three players here you know around the turn six picks but there's already five wide receivers gone um, two quarterbacks you know a tight end and a running back so I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to go for a few of the other players you know and I'm actually going to go for my guy Justin Herbert who I have been in love with I have not been able to get a single share and we'll see how the turn goes here and I am rewarded I am rewarded DJ Moore TJ Hawkinson Jonathan Taylor to finish out the fourth again Jonathan Taylor I want to see where he's going so make sure you comment down below I'd love to see where he's actually going I've got a draft, spoiler alert, you know, a little behind the curtains here. I actually have a draft Tuesday night, you know, the final draft of the offseason. And I I, I want to I see where JT goes, where I have to end mm-hmm. up p- picking him up. Um, now, Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Hopkins, and Darren Waller to start the fifth round. And it leaves me with my guy, Drake London. And I love being able to get him as my wide receiver one. Now, I didn't feel great about Chris Olave. I feel fine with Drake London being my number one guy. He should be a volume monster there in ATL. 
All right. Alexander Madison, Trevor Lawrence, Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, J.K. Dobbins. Lots of running backs just went off the board. Christian Watson yep. right at 5'10". How do we feel about Christian Watson in the fifth? It feels a little – I don't I don't like I it don't at all. Like it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really liking any of the Green Bay options, and that's why I, I, I even skipped on um, – Aaron Jones. Yeah. You know, I, I just, it just doesn't feel good in Green Bay. I think mm-hmm. it's going to be really stagnant offense. Yep. And I'm with you. I'm not I'm even sure if he's going to be the one in that on that team. All right. So who are you leaning here then now that Christian Watson is gone? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I could go, I could go tight end with either Goddard or Pitts. I've I've been I've 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 been hearing some reports that Kyle Pitts might be the fourth option. Oh, that's just a beat writer. I, I'm I know, not taking it. I know. I know. I've 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 just been hearing it and mm-hmm. everybody you know, yeah, that it, report it, broke the yeah. Twitter earlier or X or whatever. Yeah, it and it, 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 it doesn't feel great. So <laughs> um I think I'm going to play the ADP game as well and I think I'm going to get my third wide receiver mm-hmm. and uh, Here you going? I really love really love this guy but i think i'm gonna go i'm, I'm gonna go i'm gonna go nfc west and i'm gonna go tyler lockett okay all right because i wasn't sure if you were gonna go him or Ayuk. oh i, my I really gosh. thought about Ayuk. i really like brandon Ayuk, oh, wow. and i really thought about going that way but team 12 i, I mean i, I yeah, yeah yeah go yeah. ahead so 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 i mean i i really thought about him there but i think i think lockett has a pretty a pretty good upside with him mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm i'm just kind of worried with how purdy's going to play and how that offense as a whole is going to be because i i know i i always know their skill uh their skill players get hurt and yeah that is brandon Ayuk. he's a skill player so yeah so brandon right, Ayuk so, and chris godwin went right after you yep. at the turn there that team i i thought one of those guys would make it back to you make the, this next pick a little interesting but they didn't. So now, are you leaning a Dallas Goddard or Kyle Pitts here in the sixth round? I, I think I'm going to punt a little bit on the tight end position. I'm I'm okay with waiting mm-hmm. because like there's there's like the Pat Fryermuth of the world. There's like the David and There's there's even the like like the Tyler Higbees mm-hmm. you know of the world as well. So I think I'm going to go running back here, and I have a couple players I'm thinking of, and and again, it's going to be the NFC West. Um, you know, I, I am not in love with DeAndre Swift. I would rather avoid him with a 10 foot pole. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking Alvin Kamara who's suspended. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with James Conner. I, I really think Volume. he could be a sneaky, yeah. a sneaky league winner there at, 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 at 602. Yep. I'm with you. He, I mean, he, it feels like he's not talked about much, but dude mm-hmm. could be a workhorse. He doesn't have much he, he really time could. left in the NFL, but you know, they're going to they're going to beat him into the ground this upcoming year. Yes. Kyle Pitts goes at 6-3, Mike Williams at 4, DeAndre Swift at 5, Dallas Goddard at 6-6, six, six, Jerry Judy at 6-7 and Alvin Kamara leaving me on the clock here and this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So, you know, obviously I've got Drake London you know, tight ends, I'm not even looking that way at all. I'm mm-hmm. solidified. Cam Akers is here, though, and mm-hmm. I think I'm going to punt. I'm not looking at another quarterback or anything like that. So I actually am going to go wide receiver. The question is, which one of these guys do I want to go? You know, Christian Kirk, Mike Evans, George Pickens. I'm not going, I'm not looking at Michael Pittman. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not really even looking at Deontay Johnson here. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, it's it, it's tough here who I really kind of want to go for. There's so many guys that I love down here a little bit lower though. So my thought process is between Mike Evans and Christian Kirk, to be honest with you. And I think I'm actually going to go Christian Kirk. And the reason why is it's full PPR. I need a little bit of a safer floor and Mike Evans. Mm-hmm. I think he's him and Baker scares me a little bit. Um, so I, I'd rather lean with the potential, you know, floor of christian kirk that i can lean on and mike evans actually made it back to me here in the seventh but before i recap you know to finish out the sixth round cam Akers, michael pittman and dalvin cook we're now halfway through the draft so really quickly let's just give a recap of our teams through six rounds um i have christian mccaffrey tony pollard mark andrews and justin herbert with drake london and christian kirk as my wide receivers what is your team looking like right now um and then I have uh, C.D. Lamb, Garrett Wilson, and Tyler Lockett at wide receivers. Um, at running back, I have Joe Mixon and James Conner. And at quarterback, I have cor- uh, QB1, Justin Fields. 
there you go so there are still a few players left now here's the point where we're kind of you know they never actually talk about the wide receiver dead zone and i feel like there's definitely that as well in a lot of drafts they talk about the rb dead zone you know oh rounds two to four there's never any good running backs or whatever but you know, I think that there's just so many wide receivers here that it waters down these guys pretty heavily. Um, so I'm actually going to go with a running back here and solidify a bench spot here. And I'm going to be going Javante Williams. And I think Javante I has. That. I love that. Yeah, I think he's just going to be very, very safe. And I want to solidify that for this roster here. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit here so you guys can see the draft board. All right, so we you can see as we're going through here. Um, so Javante Williams, Mike Evans goes one pick after me. He was in consideration, but again, there's so many wide receivers here, and I just trust some of these other guys a little bit more than Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans is good, but you know, if you take out his one blow up game last year, that was like 25 percent of his production it, for the entire it season. It was rough last year to be. Yeah, a, and I just yeah, don't. It needs to be an Evans owner. I, I don't agree. think it's going to be a thousand yard season for him this year, unfortunately. Um, Evan Ingram at 7'6", Hollywood Brown at 7'7", Jordan Addison, the rookie, at 8", Rashad White and James Cook, running backs, at 9 and 10". You're at the, on the clock here at 7'11". Make a wish. What are you uh, What are you looking yeah, at here? Yeah, yeah. well, um, first things first, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed out that Jordan Addison didn't fall to me. I really, mm-hmm. I, I really thought about taking him there. Interesting yeah, so, player. I'm, yeah, so, um, I mean, I would love to take uh, JSN, but I mm-hmm. already have Tyler Lockett, and... I was looking um, at the Washington you know, I, one. I, yes, and that's where I think I'm going. Is is I'm I'm going to go Jahan Dotson. You okay. know, I I I I thought about tight end, but I'm 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 okay right now. Like I'm sure. not I'm not really super worried about tight end. Yep. You know, I, I I already have my quarterback. You know, I don't really like not really in love with any of the running backs here. There's mm-hmm. not really anybody that piques my interest. I mean, I don't mind David Montgomery, but I don't necessarily want. I don't really really want him to be honest so um i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go with yeah i'm i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with my guy here in Jahan dotson i think i think he has has a chance this year to really to really turn himself into the wide receiver one in in washington yep and i, I am I'm, with you. I'm, I'm very excited about him so Jackson Smith and Jigba goes right after Dave Montgomery to fill out the two guys you kind of mentioned a little bit there. Um, so you're back on the clock here. You're very balanced as of right now. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking with this next pick? Um, I'm thinking with this one. I mean, I, I, I like going into my drafts like this and, and, just, and, and just and just being very, very balanced, mm-hmm. you know, with, you know, it, it's it's going like uh, I, I mean, I mean, especially at, at the at, at the 11 spot, you know, I kind of feel you have to do that almost. Uh, because it's 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 it, it's it's because you're kind of getting spots where your tears are gone. It's mm-hmm. it's 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 by the time you are are picking again, unfortunately. Right. right. So you know, I I probably I'm thinking. I, I would I would love to take like a Zay Flowers. I think I mean I just feel it's fun taking to have an upside guy every, every now and again. Yeah. Yeah, but but I think I'm going to go running back, and it's a guy that. Okay. I'm really in love with this year and and with a new OC, I think he's going to I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to have the Jarek McKinnon role in in our nation's capital. So I'm going to go with Antonio Gibson. Okay. Loading up on Washington, you are a brave brave soul, my friend. I know. I am. <laughs> All right, right after you Michael Thomas, the wide receiver. Yeah, I, reports have not been good about Michael Thomas, but this is the best case scenario for me because three quarterbacks go off the board. Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Tua Tagovailoa there at 4, 5 and 6, AJ Dillon at 7, Pat Frymuth at 8, and that puts me back on the clock. And this is where it gets interesting because There's three players here that I really want, four players, I guess, I'm willing to take here, and they're all receivers, and I think that at least two of them, you know, I can grab at least two of the four, I'm pretty sure. Um, The four players, and I'll just talk about them quickly, Brandon Cooks is the top one. If I want Brandon Cooks, I think I have to take him just because of sleeper ADP. Uh-huh. He's going to be gone. You know, there's there's yep. six picks between me and the next one. Zay Flowers is also one of these guys. Gabe Davis and Quentin Johnston. If I can get two of those guys, I will be pretty happy. Now, Brandon Cooks is the number two. Get, you know, Zay Flowers is the only one that has the potential to be the number one in their offense. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to take Zay Flowers. 
and we'll see who makes it back to me because I'm fine with either one of those two receivers or, and they both went, oh, Quentin Johnson was the third guy here. Unfortunate. Yep. So um, Jamal Williams goes after Zay Flowers, Brian Robinson, the other Washington running back, Aaron Rodgers to finish out the eighth round. Start of the ninth round, we got Gabe Davis, Brandon Cooks, and Quentin Johnson, all three guys that I really want. I was hoping one of them would be Kadarius Toney because I do not want anything to do with Kadarius Toney. Yes, I agree. so, oh, man, this has not been a good draft for me. I'm not going to lie. I, it has <laughs> not gone well. Um, it's been rough. I agree. <laughs> I'm getting sniped from both directions here, man. Love, love taking, to see it. Love taking to see bullets it. from both directions. Um, you look at the running backs here, and might as well just kind of look at these guys. Samaj P. Ryan, Rashad Penny, not interested. Zach Charbonnet, Khalil Herbert. Khalil Herbert, maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm not. I, I feel pretty good about my three running backs that I already have. Tony Pollard, you know, um, Christian McCaffrey, and Javante. Javante should be ramping up a little bit at the start of the year. So, you know, mm-hmm. I can take an, a fourth guy here in just a little bit with maybe one of my next couple of picks and feel okay with, with stashing that. I really don't want to go five, I think, because of the three wide receivers, and I'm kind of light. So I'm going to go heavy on receiver here. Now, Juju... There's that negative report today. Traylon Burks is finally getting yeah. back. Cortland Sutton. I don't really want to load yep. up on too many Denver wide Broncos. Receiver. Wide receiver one, Cortland Sutton, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when I look at the board here, so I actually kind of well, have well, a couple well, targets here. I, I, I do have a question here. Sure. Are, are you thinking your second quarterback? I'm only taking one. I'm not doing two You're quarterbacks. Um, I'm more enough. than fine yeah. just kind of rocking with Justin Herbert. I think Justin Herbert's going to be the the number one. You you think it's Fields? Yeah. You yeah. know we we're both in on a Justin for the one on one. Absolutely. Um, so you know we we're doubling our odds that it's it's going to be a Justin at least. Yeah. But um, yeah, I. In a one quarterback, I'm not really interested. I, there will be guys to stream, you know, throughout the season. And yep. if Justin Herbert goes 100%. down, I'm in bigger trouble. So I, I would rather try and solidify my wide receiver and that, and hope that Justin Herbert is going to be the number one guy and carry me through um, a little bit there. So I'm going to go Traylon Burks here, and just we're going like to play that. the wide receiver. We're going to we're going to attack it in volume here. Kadarius Tony goes right after Khalil Herbert, David and Joku, Anthony Richardson, back to back quarterback picks here for teammate. Now, now that's actually something I could see happening in in you know yeah. your your home leagues. Juju Smith Schuster and OBJ go right before you. You are back on the clock. Who are you looking at here? Oh, that's a very good question. I mean, I I, I could go tight in here. I mean, I mean Dalton Schultz is interesting. Um, even with Cole Komet, you Dalton know, Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid is fun. But I think I'm 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 holding out. I I. I'm. I, I think I'm going to hold out for a tight end because you know I, I'm. I, I. I. have somebody that I think I'm going to get at ten two that mm-hmm. I doubt I'll get at one at 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 eleven eleven. Sure. Um. So I think I'm going to. Let's see. I. You know. I'm. I'm. Charbonnet is kind of nice here. Last of a tier yeah, potentially. So that's kind of. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And then he. He. He would be on my bench. Which which really isn't. I mean, I I, I also thought about Cortland Sutton or Elijah Moore. Mm-hmm. I I I, th- I thought about those guys. Um, I think I'm going to go. I think I will go Charbonnet, and I will get a rookie on my team, and it's going to be Zach Charbonnet. There you go. Cortland and Sutton goes. Cole Komet. So, a couple more players there. Nothing crazy. Um, what are you thinking about here now with your other pick? going tight end yeah, or are you so gonna keep going best player I, I think i think i'm gonna get my tight end because i want to make sure that he that that i get him and it's gonna be tyler higby is who is who i'm gonna is, is who i'm gonna go for i'm disappointed um, dale you could have uh taken sam laporta i thought about sam laporta <laughs> I, I really did mm-hmm. but i i i just don't i don't trust a rookie tight fair, end. Enough, fair I, enough fair enough i've been I, Even I've, by I've the been great dan campbell before. I don't care. I I'm not Fair I'm enough. not as hyped as I'm not as hyped on the lines as a lot of people are. I think they're going to do better on offense, but I don't think they're going to be like like the Motor City offense that they're going to think that they're going to run. And I I, th- I think it's going to I I mean I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying that they're going to fall on their face, but I don't think it'd be as 
good as they're thinking. So Fair I'm, I'm going to go with Tyler Higby because of the Cooper Cup injury. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I I'm not sure who Stafford's going to really tar- hyper or, you know hyper target and uh, towards the end of the towards the end of the year last year, like with um, with Cup being out, but like I I think I believe Higby had like anywhere between seven and ten targets a game and was. And was putting up really good tight yeah, end numbers. So, that was all with Baker too, but <laughs> so that, take that, that, that with a grain of salt. But I know, no, it's, I know, it's a good picker. It's a good pick. And, and 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 I and I definitely I definitely hear that. But I feel Matt Stafford's a better quarterback, and I think Higby is the one that he's probably going to trust. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with Tyler Higby. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely the volume aspect, right, in a full PPR. Yes. So I can I can yes. understand that. Alan Lazar goes right after that. Kirk Cousins, Samaj P. Ryan, Rashad Penny, Dalton Schultz, Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Dalton. Uh, all right. So again, I kind of wanted to attack this in bunches. Now, I did say I wanted a fourth running back here. And the question is, can I go one more round and Zeke, hit him with the 11? You please, please get Zeke here. No. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually <laughs> going don't. to go Elijah Moore. And, I like that. I like Elijah that. Moore or I, Sky Moore? I actually think I'm going to go Sky more here, and Ooh, the reason why, you know, they play on Thursday. Uh-huh. It's a little bit of hype for that game coming up. You know, I could always throw him in. I don't think that the Lions' defense is that good, so I could always kind of use him in week one here over Zay Flowers because uh-huh. there's that potential. Now, I'm just thinking Elijah Moore, uh, it's, it's a tough one, but... Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Sky Moore here, and we'll see how this kind of goes. So Raheem Mostert, Ezekiel Elliott, Geno Smith, Elijah Moore goes off the board. Jameson Williams was interesting. He was somebody that I was considering stashing, um, but mm-hmm. six weeks is a long time to stash, especially when I'm already weak at wide receiver. Adam Thielen and you know. My running back made it back to me, and I think that there's a couple guys here that I can still target with my last pick that'll be a wide receiver. So I'm actually going to go with Tank Bigsby here. Pretty easy to get my my fourth running back. I really, I really like Tank Bigsby. There. Yeah, man, I I think he's going to be fantastic. a stud. And you look at the tier here, and this is what's crazy to me, right? Now Sleeper's going to be a little bit different than some of the other ones, but he's in the same tier as Devin Achain, who's injured. Jarek McKinnon, who's you know, older than dirt. Elijah Mitchell, who we cannot trust to stay healthy to save his life. Damian Harris, who has no pass catching capabilities. Tyler Alger, who's got replaced by a, the number six overall pick, right? Or seven or whatever it was. Um, Deuce Vaughn, Jalen Warren, Devin Singletary. Like, none of these guys are actually upside players right the only one that's down here is kenny gainwell that's a a true upside player and kenny gainwell is probably the one i'd want to draft out of that backfield anyway because he's the cheapest here Um, but tank bigsby i do think has a real opportunity to be the number one running back in this offense and could be a very good player in a um doug peterson system there so i like tank bigsby a lot here devin achain goes right after mitchell mckinnon harris all those guys i just mentioned then Rashad Bateman goes at nine, Jared Goff at ten, and I was actually interested. I was I was kind of contemplating really quickly before you, and this gives you some time to, you know, think of who you're going to take here. But I was actually contemplating doubling up with Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman, okay. and the reason why is I will guaranteed have the better player you know what i mean like whoever is the worst player, I'm cutting them to the curb, you know, in in week one. So. um there is a little bit of gamesmanship with that, but the downside on that is in, in Dynasty, it's much worse, right? Because you would rather have both of these guys be good than one good player, right? But in Redraft, it's not so bad because you have roster space that you actually need to consider and waivers and all that stuff. So you can cut one of these players need if need be, right? So it's a little bit easier to, to justify that in a Redraft, but you know in a Dynasty having both guys to solidify which one you you're guaranteed the number one there it can work but it's definitely at a at a risk right so um it, it just, definitely is and 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 to piggyback off of that i was like if bateman if bateman would have fell to me i mm-hmm. would have taken him without even sure even thinking about it right um you know i i i i 
I think he, I, I think him and Flowers have the real potential to be the wide receiver one there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I I, th- I think it's going to be Bateman for the first few weeks and then flip the Flowers probably we will mid-season, see. In, in, we will in, see. In, in my opinion. Yeah, um, definitely. So, you know, I, I, I don't really think OBJ is going to be a factor. And whoever took him, I think that's, I mean, I mean, back I mean, around nine. At, yeah, at, at, yeah at, 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 at nine, 10, it's not horrible value, but I would much rather have Bateman two whole rounds later. Yep. So who are you going to take here with this pick then? And, you know, give um, you plenty of time to. I, I know. <laughs> I know you have. Um, Sam Laporte is still available. I'm just saying. It's tempting. That 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 would be fun <laughs> to. It, that, that, that would be interesting. To, it's, it's, it's a double up on tight end there. Um, I, I really want to go a wide receiver, but there's nobody that's really super piquing my interest. Right. You've got good receivers already, too. Like, the, yes, I will I make the case for you. And it, this is. People will will would crucify you if you took Sam Laporta. But here's the yes. thing: if you took Sam Laporta, right, all the analytics nerds would be really mad. But it would actually not be that bad of a situation. You get to see Sam Laporta on a Thursday night. If he okay. truly is the number two in this offense, like everyone's kind of talking about, that's very valuable for a tight end position, right? Especially, you know, I get at the whole rookie argument and everything, but Tyler Higby, your whole argument was predicated on Cooper Cup is not going to be there for week one. Yep. There is a real chance that Cooper Cup is there for week one and it can play, right? You know, there's all the talk about the setback and everything like that, but they're calling him day to day. They're not calling him week to right. week. They're calling him day to day. There is still that always that possibility that, you know, Cooper Cup is healthy enough to get on the field in week one and then all of a sudden all those Tyler Higby targets just disappear, right? And it's like That's very true. You know, you'd that, you'd have that, to make that, that decision true. early because Sam Laborda obviously is playing on uh on thursday but you know i just think that there's a little bit more context involved with it that a lot of yeah. people ignore you know what i mean that, that that is very true and i think i'm gonna hold on the porter right now only because team 12 has two tight ends already yeah it's true so so so, true. <laughs> so 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 you know i i don't have to worry about that you know and and you know, I, I I think it's important to know who your league mates t- are taking as as right. as, 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 as yes. a certain point. Track the draft board um, for sure. Yeah, is is very important. You know, it's for instance like uh, like team eight has not taken a, a tight end yet, right? At all. Yep. So you know, you know, it's 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 just important to to know who your league mates are taking. And and a lot of these players are are, are, are taking two tight ends. So, yeah, I know. You know, I mean, it, it it's it's with the volatility of the tight end position. It's I, I feel that's very important. But sure. I'm 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 going to go with someone who's been rising for both of us, and that and that we talked about last week in our wide receiver rookie rankings, and Marvin Mims. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. I like I'm, it. I'm I'm going to go Mar- I'm going to go Marvin Mims because we're really not sure on the Jerry Judy injury a whole lot and, mm-hmm. and, and how, and how he's going to do go. It's, it's, it's going in, in, in the first month of this season. And we're not really sure how Cortland Sutton is, how, how they're going to play Cortland Sutton, how they're going to have uh, Greg Dulcich or um, potentially Adam Troutman. But I think that's a whole different issue. Right. Um, you know, you know, all, 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 all of different pass catchers in, um, in Denver, but I'm going to go with Marvin Mims because I, I really think he could be a sleeper in that so so tyler algier darnell mooney right after you're back on the clock with your last pick yes. what are you thinking here yes so i mean I, I i will go back to um it's my pick though is at, at my at, at 11 11 like i really did think about tyler algier i think mm-hmm. he can have a sneaky good season and and be sneaky good you know and and, and be like a top 30 running back and maybe it all, it, it all depends I, how much I, volume I can, goes to Bijan. yes it yes. entirely and I, involves I, and, in I, and, and i understand that but like they're gonna have to spell Bijan sometime maybe i mean and look the the, the counter gonna, argument yeah. to that the only counter argument yeah. is you look yeah. at what how christian mccaffrey was used you know he was a very very high first round pick they used him on 90 percent. like for the first couple of years yeah. it was like a hundred percent snap share for christian mccaffrey and eventually his body kind of wore out and they realized yeah. oh this is probably not good to give this guy a hundred percent snap share but they did it they still did it for like four years right three four years until he got injured i could see them doing like 
eighty percent snap share for Bijan. I really could. Um, and then you know Tyler Algier could be the guy that spells him, or it could be it could be Cordero Patterson as well. So that's the only right. downside. I, I agree with you. There's some potential there with Algier, but it, we just don't know until we actually see usage in the first game here. So um, your point's valid. I just wanted to you know yeah. bring up the the yeah. potential yeah. counter counter argument there. Yeah. Yeah, so um yeah, so for my last pick, um I think I'm gonna go with Sam Laporta. Hey, I, let's go. I, I know. And I, I understand the argument. I mean I, I, I also could have waited for Greg Dulcich, which I think he could be a part of that offense, but Chig's I kind of interesting Denver. here too, a little yeah, bit. Chig 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 is Chig is interesting, but I'm worried about the, the, the Titans offense as a whole. I think they're gonna be really it's I don't know. I'm I don't know, I'm kind of out <laughs> I'm on the with Titans. you. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm I'm out on the Titans, and there's nobody else here for the tight end position that I really am interested in. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it gets pretty thin after that. So I'm gonna go with Sam Laporta here and just shore up my my uh, tight end spot. Your weakest position, be, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Tyler Boyd goes right after Chig, Dawson Knox, Daniel Jones, Brock Purdy, where she writes. I will say, I gotta say this. You know, in a one quarterback league, getting Daniel Jones in the twelfth round, I get it to second oh, quarterback. Beautiful. You know, Brock it's Purdy beautiful. as well. Yeah. That's such good value yeah. on those guys in a 100%. one quarterback. If you did punt on the quarterback position, yep. now I actually had a guy here that I I knew would not be taken because of ADP on sleeper. Um, there's no chance that a, a computer was going to take this player in real life. I could see this guy going a lot higher. We've been talking about the Rams a lot here, and I'm actually going to take Vander Jefferson um, as my Ooh, last like wide receiver. I like it because I yeah. really need that depth at wide receiver. And you know, if Cooper Cup misses a long period of time, we saw Keenan Allen just last year miss ten games because of a hamstring injury. If Cooper Cup misses ten games, Van Jefferson is going to be the de facto number one for this team. This team's going to be in a lot of trouble, don't get me wrong, but Van Jefferson's going to get a massive target share. So, you know, adding that in the last, with my last pick, felt pretty pretty nice there. Um, Deuce Vaughn, Jalen Warren, and Jacoby Myers finished out the 12th. Pretty good mock draft, I felt like. You know, it started a little oh, rough, absolutely. getting very heavily sniped, but let's go through our roster. Go ahead and drop yours really quick, your full roster here. All right. All right. So at, at, at quarterback, I have I'm Justin Fields. At running back, I have Joe Mixon, James Conner, uh, Antonio Gibson, and Zach Charbonnet. Uh, at, at wide receiver, I have C.D. Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Tyler Lockett, Jahan Dotson, and Marvin Mims, and and then at tight end, I, I doubled up with Tyler Higby and Sam Laporta. Very, very nice. Your, your receivers are definitely better, but I think my running backs yes, might be a little bit safer at the top end. They but probably are. We'll uh, we'll put this out for 100%. a poll, and, and maybe we can recap yeah. these two teams, see who you guys like a little bit more here. But my team, Justin Herbert at quarterback, at running back, Christian McCaffrey, Tony Pollard, Javante Williams, and Tank Bigsby fill out my four guys here. At my wide receiver position, Drake London, Christian Kirk, Zay Flowers. I got Traylon Burke, Sky Moore, and Van Jefferson. And then because I had the great Mark Andrews, onesie of the tight end position, didn't feel like I needed to double up there. So a little bit of flexibility there from, from the great Mark Andrews. But, yeah, all in all, not a terrible draft. Again, we'll, we can put this out there, and you guys can let us know who you liked a little bit more. But... That said, Dale, any last thoughts here on this mock draft? Um, I'm just going to say I won the draft, and I'm fully okay with it. And and if you guys think otherwise, I would love to hear it in, in, the, in the comments. Yeah, you can lie all you want, my friend. It's not true. Please so. do. Please do. <laughs> but that said, again, you can find us over on X at TDC underscore Calvin at Dynasty underscore Dale. You can find the podcast at FF After Dark. Hit us up with any questions. You know, in season, we're going to keep going. It's going to shift to more of a redraft focus because you got to win your weekly matchups. You're not going to just be winning the offseason anymore. We got to actually get some wins here, boys, so we can get some titles. So um, we're going to be shifting towards more of a redraft focus with, you know, a Dynasty background right where with a dynasty base where you know you're not going to be selling all your elite players just to to get that one title right it's not worth it so you know hit us up with any questions you guys might have 
I'm excited. We got a lot of content. We're going to be rolling all through the season, and we have finalized what we're going to be doing in season as well. And it's going to be fun. Hopefully, we're going to be able to keep it up. It's going to be a long, long stretch. No breaks for us, unfortunately. Um, but you know, we got to figure something out with this with some, we with some vacations and stuff. But uh, that said, tough. yeah. Uh, that said, we'll see how it goes. Until next time, thank you guys so much for joining us here tonight. And have a good night.